Well, I feel at home over here in Lynette, Alabama. I, I wasn't going to confess this, but one of the most embarrassing experiences I ever had in my life was here. I was running for governor in 1970, and I made a speech over in West Point to the Lions Club. And that afternoon, that was at noontime, and afternoon I started shaking hands with all the merchants, one store after another. And I would go in and I would say, I'm Jimmy Carter, I'm running for governor of Georgia, I hope you'll vote for me. And all of a sudden I noticed everybody started laughing at me. And they finally said, Jimmy, you're not in Georgia anymore, you're in Alabama. <laughs> but the good thing is, I think I carried Chambers County when the boat came in, so that was all right. Well, Rosa and I, night before last, were in uh, Tel Aviv, Israel. And then we flew back to, to Boston instead of planes. And um, then we came down here. And as Linda said, we had planned to come here for the celebration of the 50th uh, wedding anniversary. But this is a great occasion for us to gather again together. together. I think that one of the most uh, important things I can say about Millard Fuller, and every time I say Millard, you can add Linda to it, is his ability to put his finger on perhaps the most important issues that affect human beings, not only in the United States, but around the world. The greatest challenge I think the world faces these days is the growing chasm or division between rich people and poor people. And I think Millard saw that the difference can be described in the phrase human rights. And he and Linda saw quite early in their lives that having a decent home was one of the basic human rights that serves to equalize people, no matter where they are or how much income they have or how much influence they might have in the political world. Everywhere I've been since I met Millard, it seems that homes take on a new meaning for me. One of my favorite cartoons is, was in the New Yorker magazine last year. This little boy is looking up at his father and he says, Daddy, when I grow up, I want to be a former president. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought it so funny back in 1980 when the election returns came in. <laughs> and I was involuntarily retired from my job. But you know, I think God blessed me with that decision of the American people. And one of the reasons that I know that's true is that shortly thereafter, Rosa and I met Millard and Linda Fuller. I was tired. After serving four years in the White House and the campaigns and so forth, I had resolved in my mind that I would spend the first year at home just writing a book and paying my debts and so forth. But I teach Sunday school in my little church and a lot of people from Habitat, which is just nine miles away, the, the uh, national headquarters, came over to my Sunday school class and they began to talk to me about Habitat. I didn't know what it was. And finally, to make a long story short, we agreed to let Miller and Linda Fuller come over to our house in planes. And I told Rosa ahead of time, don't agree to anything. <laughs> I've heard about these folks, don't agree to anything. We got all we can do already. Well, they came in our house. In a half an hour, we had agreed to work for Millard Fuller. <laughs> and it was, a work, it was the worst thing I thought that happened, but it turned out to be the best thing one of the best things that ever happened in my life. Because Millard and Linda were the founders and the champions and the organizers and the implementers of Habitat for Humanity. A dream 
which, as Millard said in the movie, nobody thought could be realized except them. Because they knew that God would provide the fulfillment of a dream. I remember I was with some volunteers from Habitat Open Americas one day, and one of the women told me that, yeah, I know, Millard has the dreams, we have the nightmares. <laughs> because when Millard said we're going to build 100 homes next week in a certain place, nobody thinks it could happen. But he would make it happen. And let not only 100 homeowner families be filled with gratitude, but also all the volunteers that went to the Habitat building projects and paid their own way and worked as hard as we've ever worked anywhere in our lives. I remember David Snell is one of the slave drivers that I have known in my life. I understand he's still doing it for the Fuller Center for Housing. I think maybe even more than the practical experience and the gratification that we've had from seeing a house finished and keys given to a homeowner family and a Bible presented to them, which always brought tears to the homeowner family and all the volunteers assembled with them. Perhaps more important than that was the religious education that I received from Millard Fuller. One time I went to Chicago, Illinois, to help raise money for Habitat. And just shortly before that, I had taught a lesson from 2 Corinthians. And I used that biblical lesson to describe what Habitat and Millard Fuller meant to me. The Corinthians asked St. Paul, how do we know what is important in our lives? How do we know what never changes? How can we fulfill the natural desire of a human being to, for great things? And Paul gave them a very strange answer. He said, they're the things that you cannot see. Well, I don't deny you can see a house, but what Paul was talking about was peace and truth and justice. And humility and service to others and forgiveness and uh, compassion and love. That bridging from our going to church and taking somebody with us on the one hand and demonstrating what Christ told us to do is a very difficult thing to tie together. But Millard Fuller taught me how it could be done. And for that, I am very grateful to him. <laughs>